hydrogen is often touted as the magical fuel that will deliver net zero. True, its main advantage over traditional fuels is that it burns completely clean, the only byproduct being water. But it has many, many challenges and drawbacks, not least the fact that hydrogen isn't readily available on Earth. It needs to be generated by splitting water into its constituent parts. Those of us who are old enough to remember doing this in chemistry class, passing an electric current through water and collecting oxygen from one electrode and hydrogen from the other. And there's the big catch. It requires electricity to produce masses of electricity. And where precisely will that come from? Farts and sunbeams? Sorry, I mean wind and solar? More likely coal and gas. And the infrastructure required to transport, store and use hydrogen is mind-bogglingly complex and expensive. It needs to be stored at up to 700 times atmospheric pressure, or 10,000 pounds per square inch. If you think an EV battery and thermal runaway is bad, just imagine a hydrogen cylinder failing. But as usual, the net zero zealots, aided and abetted by the legacy media, seem to overlook all these serious obstacles and think that hydrogen, like the lithium-ion batteries in EVs, is the solution to the world's ills. It isn't. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer, now Sydney-based YouTuber. Be sure to follow me on the usual socials for more content, links in the description, and there's a code on screen. Scan that with your phone if you want to sign up for an occasional MGuy email. It'd be great to have you on board. This Rainbows and Unicorns article in the New York Times is a classic example of the naive attitudes towards hydrogen, implying that pursuing such a path will bring benefits rather than creating a bunch more extremely difficult problems. Hydrogen offers Germany a chance to take the lead in green energy. A subsidiary of ThyssenKrupp, Germany's venerable steel producer, is landing major deals for a device that makes the clean burning gas from water. In the city of Duisburg in Germany's industrial heartland is a vast steel complex that is one of Europe's largest polluters. But alongside the mills, furnaces and smelters, technicians have developed a machine that could soon play a vital role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. By using electricity to split water in its two elements, the device, a test model called an electrolyzer, produces hydrogen, a carbon-free gas that could help power mills like the one in Duisburg. See, that kind of comment just reveals the scientific illiteracy of the people writing this article. Like it's some magical device, when in fact all it is is a vat of water with two electrodes. If adopted widely, the devices could help clean up heavy industry, such as steel making in Germany and elsewhere. We are maybe in one of those very few promising industries where Germany has a significant and very promising base, says Werner Ponikvar, chief executive of ThyssenKrupp Nucera, which produces the electrolyzers. The company was spun off from ThyssenKrupp, a German steel giant, in 2023. And, of course, the brainless bureaucrats in Washington think that throwing money at it will make the problems go away. Washington earmarked more funding as part of the incentives in President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, the 2022 law that is offering hundreds of billions of dollars for carbon-free or green technology. The Department of Energy awarded Nucera a $50 million grant last month to further develop production of gigawatt-scale electrolyzers for North America. Notice how they just casually throw around phrases like gigawatt-scale electrolyzers. Where, pray, is that huge amount of electricity supposed to come from? Wind and solar? I think not. All of this fantasy is busted wide open in a superb article by Robert Bryce, entitled The H Stands for Hype. Link in the description. I suggest you read the whole thing because it's an excellent article. But here are some choice extracts. Regardless of tax credits and subsidies, making and using hydrogen is a high entropy, high cost process. As a friend in the oil refining business told me last year, if you like $6 per gallon gasoline, you're going to love $14 to $20 per gallon hydrogen. As for friend of the author Stephen Brick's thermodynamic obscenity line, the numbers, which I'll explain in a moment, are easy to understand except for politicians, clearly. Hydrogen is insanely expensive in energy terms to manufacture. It takes about three units of energy in the form of electricity to produce two units of hydrogen energy. In other words, the hydrogen economy requires scads of electricity, a high quality form of electricity, to make a tiny molecule that's hard to handle, difficult to store and expensive to use. 
Among the biggest challenges in handling and storing the gas is the problem of hydrogen embrittlement, which can occur when metals are exposed to hydrogen. That means we can't use existing gas pipelines or tanks to move and store the gas. As for using the gas, yes, it can be blended with natural gas and put into turbines or reciprocating engines. However, the best way to use it is in a fuel cell. And from where will those devices come? I'm old enough to collect social security. I've been reporting about the energy sector for nearly four decades. And yet, in all that time, I've seen precisely three fuel cells. How much would the hydrogen economy cost? In 2020, Bloomberg NEF estimated that producing enough green hydrogen to meet 25% of global energy demand would require more electricity than the world now generates from all sources and an investment of $11 trillion in production and storage. The obscene thermodynamics of hydrogen can be understood by looking at an announcement made last year by Constellation Energy. According to a March 10, 2023 article in Nuclear Newswire, a new hydrogen production project at the company's Nine Mile Point nuclear plant in New York is part of a $14.5 million cost-shared project between Constellation and the Department of Energy. Of that sum, $5.8 million was coming from the DOE. The article explained that using 1.25 megawatts of zero carbon energy per hour, the plant's electrolyzer will produce 560 kilograms of clean hydrogen per day. The maths is simple. The plant uses 30 megawatt hours of electricity to produce 560 kilograms of hydrogen per day. One megawatt hour of electricity is equal to 3,600 megajoules of energy, and one kilogram of hydrogen contains about 130 megajoules of energy. Therefore, Nine Mile Point uses 108,000 megajoules of electricity to produce 72,800 megajoules of hydrogen, or 1.5 megajoules of electricity for one megajoule of hydrogen. So every time you make hydrogen, you're losing a third of the energy you put in straight away, for nothing. And that's before you even get onto the handling and storage of it once made. As I say, go and read the whole article at the link in the description. Just like with EV batteries, the challenges with hydrogen just highlight how incredibly simple and efficient petrol and diesel are as fuels. You can carry 600 megajoules of energy around in a plastic can that costs 20 bucks from a local hardware store. Try doing that with an EV battery, or indeed with hydrogen.